Uh, hi there. My name is John and I'm the owner of this YouTube channel and someone asked me to do a video on the current code of points. Um, but this actually is the wrong one. You see there that that is the men's code of points. So the current code of points is actually available. If you go to the FIG website, they have this rule section and um, it is publicly available. Uh, I used to have to buy them. So let's just do this the easy way and actually go through it. Um, I guess my first comment is that the 2013 code of points is not dramatically different than the code of points that preceded it. The last major overhaul really came in 2006. And then in 2009, I would say that there was a fairly significant change in that the number of counted skills was decreased from 10 to 8. But since then the changes have been relatively minor. So let's um, see what we can find. Now, usually these things in red mean that a major change has been made. Um, now, I guess I can't promise you that all of these changes were present in 2013. Uh, I'm making this video in 2016, the last year of the code. Um, so I'm going to skip through sort of these general technical rules to um, mm, the nitty gritty. So this right here is somewhat interesting. I mentioned that there are eight skills counted towards the total difficulty score, but that also affects the maximum execution score. So if someone does what's called a short routine and does less than eight, eight elements, you see that the total execution score they can get is reduced from a full 10.0. Um, okay, so this I think is a change, I believe. 99% sure that in the 2009 version of the code, elements only went through G, and we can see that now H and I categories have been introduced as well. Mm. Um. Okay, sorry, I guess this is what happens when I make a vault, or not a vault. A video somewhat unprepared. This all explains different deductions for form problems. But okay, this is the part we're most interested in, the part that governs the individual apparatuses, or, or is it apparati? I'm not quite sure. So this is a change that I believe was introduced some point during this current cycle. This determines how uh, the event finals and vaulting is judged. I believe it used to be that the two vault scores were averaged, and now you see that um, uh, it looks like the... Um, oh, never mind. I guess that... Never mind. Forget what I just said. Okay, so here we see the connection values on the uneven bars. I've skipped over vaulting. Um, they're actually fairly stingy. So this is um, a change actually from the 2012 code. It used to be that you got one tenth of a point for connections like this, but that you got two tenths of a point if there was a connection between a D and an E element. So if you think of Victoria Komova's routine from the 2012 Olympics, she did a in-bar stalder with a full turn, or like a stalder with the legs together and done inside the bar. And then she did that into a Tkachev. Uh, well, that was actually more her 2011 routine. So that would have been an ED combination, which would have been worth two tenths. At the Olympics, she actually did a pike stalder, which would have been an EE combination that also would have been worth two tenths of a point but you see here both elements have to be flight elements to get the two tenths in credit otherwise it's considered this connection right here the one tenth connection 
Um, so it's a lot harder to get two tenth connections on the bars, which is why we're seeing a lot more of like the um, pack salto into Van Leeuwen um, kind of combination, that combination that's really been characteristic of Russian routines or that um, um, let's see, what is the name of that U.S. gymnast who just won a gold medal in the four-way tie? It's not Nora Flatley. Gosh, how embarrassing. I can't remember her name. I guess that's because I'm not a huge, huge fan of hers. But um, gymnasts like that are doing pack saltos down into those E transitions back up to the high bar. And this, I think, is why. But the problem with that is that it's really reduced the variety of connections that gymnasts are doing on the uneven bars. And I think the routines are becoming a lot more compulsory now, with a lot of them taking on that sort of Russian style of Shaposhnikova type skills and pack saltos and things like that. This is interesting. And actually, I think that uh, having just watched the 2016 um, uh, Pacific Alliance Championships, I think that Simone Biles' routine actually violates this rule. If you do a Shaposhnikova and you do not immediately connect it into another skill, it looks like they're taking a deduction for an empty swing. So you can't simply swing backwards and then do a kip cast handstand. Um, all right, that's really all I have to say about the uneven bars. I guess one other comment, I think the Chinese style of routines were sort of hurt as well. They used to get two tenths of a point for doing two E skills in a row. Um, and um, that included those sort of uh, inverted giant pirouetting skills, those one arm spins the Chinese are so famous for. Now, that only gets a tenth of a point uh, because it doesn't involve two flight elements. Okay, moving on to the balance beam. So I actually like the changes that were made here in terms of scoring. Um, so let's look at what that is. So here we go. Um, a CC connection of uh, dance or mix skills, so like a switch leap into a back tuck. That was, um, oh, here's, I guess let's, um, so that would be worth one tenth, these connections right here. That's all, that's been worth a tenth for a long time. This um, AC turn connection, that isn't new in this code of points, but this is new. The last time we saw this, was a long time ago. The last time you could get any bonus for doing like a front tuck into a split jump was in the year 2000. So I like that they brought this back. I think it introduces more variety and also more opportunities for bonus. This is not new. The idea of doing like a front walk over to one foot immediately into a scale. That's been worth a tenth of a point um, since I think 2009. Um, that I don't believe is new either. So a DD combination worth two tenths would be something like Aliyah Mustafana's um, switch leap half turn into a nodi. Now let's look at the acrobatic connections. Um, okay, this is new as of 2013, this flight series bonus. Basically, you used to only be able to get connections by connecting difficult elements, but here they've introduced the idea that if you do three acrobatic elements into a row, it's worth one-tenth of a point, as long as it's at least something like a back handspring, back handspring, back tuck. Um, the reason I like this is that when Victoria Komova used to do a back handspring layout layout in like 2011, I believe she stopped doing this at the 2012 Olympics. She only got a tenth of a point for it, plus, plus the value of the C skill that she might have counted. And that's because it would have been seen as a CC connection worth one-tenth of a point. Now she gets that plus um, another tenth in bonus because there's three elements in a row. 
And I think that's why this series has become a little bit more popular now with U.S. gymnasts like Simone Biles and Lori Hernandez doing it as well. Um, BE worth a tenth of a point. That isn't new. That means something like a round off into a two-foot layout gets a tenth of connection, which I think is interesting because you can't really do a layout without doing a round off or at least a back handspring into it. So you're sort of getting a built-in connection bonus for doing that skill at all. This, I am fairly certain, is a change from 2012. There is sort of um, an extra connection worth extra bonus that governs forward connections, like a front handspring into a front tuck, and I think that's totally fair. Those skills uh, the, those combinations should be valued more than the same thing backwards. This right here is also a change. So um, it used to be that if you did a B, C, D combination, that that was worth two tenths of a point total. You'll see that that's gone because connections of three or more elements are sort of now governed by this addition. Um, but uh, a CD connection is, uh, or a DC connection, because of course these can be reversed, is worth two tenths of a point if a certain. Um, I found an entry about certainty oh. on Wikipedia. Well, Shall I we don't care about that. Um, if a certain uh, requirement is made, so you know, what's the difference between this and this? Well, um, hmm, where exactly does this explain this? I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but um, um, this page doesn't really tell us in a neat way why this is worth two tenths, whereas this is worth one tenth. Um, Hmm. Well, I look fairly foolish, don't I? Let's read this. Okay. Um, this is the series bonus. Connections with rebounding effect develop in one direction. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that maybe they're... Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, non-rebounding forward only. Uh, so this is the deal. If you do a front aerial into a, uh, I'm sorry, front aerial walkover into a front aerial that is um, a forward connection that would be worth one tenth. If you do a, an aerial walkover, which would be a D skill, into a layout step out, that's, um, you know, actually a fairly easier combination if you look just at the element values because you're going from DD to DC, but that would be worth two tenths because um, you're changing direction and not just proceeding only in this forward direction. Um, but notice that this is non-rebounding. So two aerials in a row is considered non-rebounding. But if you did a front aerial into a front tuck, I believe they would consider that rebounding. And there was a Ukrainian gymnast that did that. And so I would imagine she would get two tenths of a point for that series. Um, but this is more for like the Lyudmila Yezhova type of connection or the Anna Pavlova type of forward connection where the elements are uh, on one foot stepping into another. Okay, glad that I cleared that up. So another major change in 2013, which hurt gymnasts like Catalina Ponor, is that all connections, unless indicated otherwise, um, Um, have to be rebounding. So you really can't do a front aerial walkover into a back handspring anymore and expect to get these sort of connections up here. It looks like some connections you're allowed to do non-rebounding. And uh, let's see if we can find an asterisk mark to see exactly what those are. Um, I don't really see an asterisk here. So... Um, 
well, okay, I guess they're talking about for the series bonus, it doesn't have to be rebounding. So I guess that's why uh, Mustafana did a front aerial into a back handspring, back hand, or she did two front aerials into a back handspring because she would be able to get this series bonus even though there's a non-rebounding aspect of that connection. Personally, I'm in favor of this change because you can't tell me that a back handspring layout step out rule fold uh, is the same as a front aerial back handspring layout, even though they all involve a B, a C, and a D skill. Um, so Romanian gymnast Catalina Ponor at the 2012 Olympics, she relied almost completely on non-rebounding connections where there was a direction change. Um, okay, wow, let me move on. Um, so I think I'm going to just kind of skip forward because the rest of this involves sort of deductions and things like that. So let's look at the floor exercise and see if I can spot the major changes here. Um, okay. Um, this is the special requirements. Usually people are not so interested in and going over that. Um, okay, these are the connection values on the floor, so let's see what I can find. Um, indirect connections, this would be like a one and a half twist through to a two and a half twist, or a front tuck with a full twist, round off back handspring, double pike. Um, these two tenth connections would be things like a one and a half twist through to a triple twist. And DD, there's really only one gymnast who I think have done that. And that would be the Canadian gymnast, Ellie Black, who did, I don't know how she did this, I've never seen this before, a two and a half twist walk out, round off back handspring into some other skill. She's done a triple twist and she's also done a double back tuck which would be an E skill or a D skill, respectively. Um, okay, direct connections. This would mean connections where there's no round off back handspring in between. This is new as of 2013. This would be a whip double tuck or two and a half twist punch front. You would not have gotten bonus for that in 2012 because it would have had to be a B skill not an A skill. And this is another change I like, kind of on the balance beam. They've increased the variety. So, you know, it used to be we really only kind of saw two and a half twists into front layouts, but now you could do a front layout, a tuck, a pike, and get the same bonus. Uh, CC skill is also worth a tenth. Brenna Dowell does that. She does a one and a half twist through to a front layout full. Two tenths of a point for a CD connection. This would be like a Leo Mustafana's two and a half twist into a front layout full. Also get major bonus for AE connections like a whip triple twist, a triple twist punch front, or mm, you know double Arabian punch front. Um, so let's look at Ali Raceman's uh, first tumbling pass on the floor exercise. She would get two tenths of a point for the one and a half twist through to the double Arabian, and then she would also get two tenths of a point for the double Arabian into the front layout. And this, of course, I'm just talking about connection bonus. I'm not talking about the bonus, or not the bonus, but the difficulty points she would get for those individual skills, assuming she counts them. Okay, D salto into B dance. So this is new. Um, in 2012, you could do a D skill or higher into an A skill and get a tenth of a point. So we saw people doing double back tucks into split leaps. I think both Gabby Douglas and um, Allie Raceman did something like that as their final tumbling pass on the floor exercise. Um, now, if it's a D skill, you have to do a B skill, um, which... Um, it's been a while since I've looked at dance elements that are this minor, so what would be a B skill? I think a sheep jump is a B skill on the floor exercise, and maybe also a wolf jump is a B skill, but I'm not sure. If you want to get um, 
bonus for doing an A leap, you have to be doing an E salto, like a double Arabian, and do a stag leap. Um, it's interesting that they specify it has to be done in this order because who really is going to do the reverse? Who can do a split jump into a double Arabian? That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> this, um, I think, might be new. I don't remember seeing this in 2012, these sort of turn connections. Uh, actually, I can't really tell you for sure if these existed at all. Did we see anybody do D turns? Did we see anyone do like a leg up double turn into a double turn in 2012? Um, maybe these Ds didn't exist at all. I guess I don't really remember. But um, anyways, I just gave you an example of what this would look like. And that would be, of course, worth one tenth of a point. <clears throat> This, I'm pretty sure, is new, and I don't think we've seen this at all. This means you would have to do a turn directly into another turn without putting your leg down, kind of like how they do in rhythmic gymnastics, where they'll do like a attitude pirouette and then whip their leg forward and continue to pirouette um, with their leg held out in front. Um, actually, we did see someone do this. I take it back. Aliyah Mustafana in one of her routines in 2015, I think it was at the Baku European Games, she did um, a full turn in attitude position. And then as she was completing it, she whipped her leg forward and tried to do a double turn with her leg held up, which would be a D skill, but she would get an extra tenth because of that connection with no turn in between. But I think she fell out of it every time. I don't know if she got really full credit for that sequence. Um, all right, so um, let's see. This was another change that I'm not a fan of, this sort of change in um, preparation for tumbling passes. So you can't stand on two feet um, more than once before a tumbling series which is why now they're having to do kind of ridiculous dancing, some gymnasts doing it more effectively than others before, before tumbling. But you can't start off with two feet uh, more than once, and most gymnasts probably use that up on their first tumbling pass. Adjustment into the uh, corner using simple steps, run without arm work or large body movement. So again, you have to kind of dance into the corner is what they're saying. Um, I don't like that. Um, it also just seems kind of dangerous, and most gymnasts don't really pull it off well. You can kind of tell that they're really resting, but waving their arms. <clears throat> oh, this is interesting. Exercise starts immediately with a tumbling pass. Um, I wasn't aware that that was a deduction. That must be kind of on the newer side. Subsequent acro line performed after previous line along the same diagonal. Um, so I guess you can't really do, you know, I guess just like it says, you can't really, um, you have to do some kind of choreography. Oh, well, no, I guess you can't even do that. You, um, you, you, yeah, you have to move to another corner before tumbling back in the same, along the same diagonal, unless you're doing... I guess a Dominique Dawes style long acro line, which no one really does anymore. Um, all right, that I think is really all I have to say. I'm sure there's some changes here to these like, you know, element values, but if I covered all of that, this video would last forever, so I'm not going to do it. Um, you know, let's see if there's anything highlighted in red that, you know, would draw our attention to it. I don't think that there were too many major changes. I mean, I know that Aminar Vault was reduced in difficulty um, by a couple of tenths. Couldn't tell you what it is going into this cycle. What's this? Clear hip circle, um, counter pike. Oh, so this is a release move that has a name. I think it's, um, is it called a church? or something like that. Basically, this is a piked Hindorf. It looks like they changed the element value to an 
uh, an F skill, or maybe it's a new new um, element in this code of points. I, I can tell it's an F because this 5 means it's an E, 4 means D, so 6 corresponds with F. What happened here um, also with half turn on handstand? Oh, this is because there was a new element. There was a Latin American gymnast who did this bail with half turn to handstand with a half turn. Um, in the code of points, I used to put the name of the person it was named after right here, but now that there's a table at the end, which I think is kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, I'm sure some vaults were adjusted in difficulty. There's always things that are adjusted here and there in terms of difficulty. Um, I guess the major change I already covered, which was the introduction, introduction excuse me, of a H and I skills. Um, hmm, I'm not sure what this is because there's no element listed there. This is a triple back off the uneven bars. That's a G skill. I'm kind of surprised it's only a G. There's really only just two or maybe three people I've ever seen do that. Magana or Magiana was the name of the gymnast who made that up. She was from Colombia or something. Um, Dominique Mach Machiano actually used to do that when she was a junior, she said in her book. Uh, these are some new mounts that were added. Um, it's a, a D? That can't be. I don't know why it says D here because it's in the A column and also it has a 1.1 so that 0.1 tells us it's an A skill. Um, I guess at some point, I can't remember if it was in this code or another one, all mounts had to actually be in the code of points, so they've had to add a lot of these really easy mounts in order for them to be credited, which seems a little silly to me. Why does the mount have to be in the code of points? Um, okay. Gosh, here's some great mounts that we really just don't see anymore. Um, Irina Krasnyanska used to do this one. Haven't seen that in a little while. Um, this is a great mount that Christy Phillips used to do. You see it's a D, so there are some really difficult mounts out there that involve press to handstands on one arms and things like that, but um, they're just not really seen in the code of points. This is interesting. Nastia Liukin used to do this mount in 2006 when it was a D. Now it's only a B, so that disappeared. Never actually seen someone do this, a front aerial walkover as a mount. That would be really hard. Um, right, I'm gonna, sorry, I want to be conscious of the time. I don't want to bore anyone who might actually be watching this. Um, oh, Frances Denusia, she was the first person who did this. I don't know if it's named after her though, this aerial cartwheel across the beam. Um, side salto, tucked with half turn. That's the element that uh, I think Steffi Schaefer, is it, from Germany, made up. Um, here's one thing I don't understand. Why is a double front off the beam an F, but a double Arabian is a G? They were both Gs in the 2006 code of points. Um, I think that they're both pretty darn hard. They should both be Gs in my opinion. Not that I've ever done either of them. Um, okay, so here's a change to, let's see, triple turn with leg held upward. Oh, this is the new element, the Mustafana. What was the change? A triple turn, just a basic triple turn, used to be a D skill. You can see that they've devalued it recently to a C, and there is no D turn of that variety, but you get E value if you do four turns. One thing that I've never, ever, ever liked about any code of points, and I'm pretty sure this has been true since, you know, 1990, um, since 1996 when the E category 
well, I mean, 1993, when that code of points came out and the E category was introduced, no turn on beam or floor has ever been credited above an E. So if you do a quintuple turn with five spins, you'd still count it as an E, which I don't think is fair. Um, okay, so that's what red means. That must mean re recently introduced elements. Um, this is interesting. I don't know when this happened, but um, for a long time, certainly, uh, it, I, I think this was true even in 2016, but I know that, or six, excuse me, I know this was true in the 2001 through 2005 code of points. The Podkopayeva, this double front with half choice, was only an E. It got lifted to an F um, at some point in the last 10 years. Um, I'm, you know, as time goes on, I kind of lose some of these details, but still, we haven't seen anyone do it, even though they raised it to an F. Um, okay, a double twisting double back got lifted to an H at some point during this code of points. That was not true in 2012, because of course, as high as it went, was G. Um, double salto backwards with half twists, that would be the biles, that's a G skill. Double twisting double layout is the I skill, I think it's the only I skill in existence that I think got submitted in 2013. So all this back here is the shorthand that the judges use, I guess this is uh, maybe a scoring sheet they use. Good luck trying to memorize all of that shorthand. Um, I guess the last thing I'll show you is, yeah, here, uh, what is this? Yeah, maybe more shorthand. Um, the, la the last thing I wanted to show you was the table of named and known elements. Yeah, it starts right here. Um, quite interesting because it goes back really far. You see here Nellie Kim, 1974, first gymnast to do a um, handspring forward on one and a half twist off. So that's just a simple handspring ball with no salto. But um, yeah, there you go. So I hope that this was interesting and informative, even though I didn't prepare and I kind of rushed. If you have any questions, um, let me know. Thanks.